Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Something a little bit different today. We're going to do some science. And we know it's science because I've got my science glasses on. Now I was contacted by this company, Tin Mori, about some 3D filament that they wanted me to try. And actually they sent me two types. So they sent me a glass fibre PETG and they also sent me a carbon fibre PETG. Now neither of these I've tried before. I've always wanted to try the carbon fibre because, well, carbon fibre sounds really cool. But I was interested about the glass fibre. So they reached out to me and said, you can try the glass fibre and the carbon fibre filaments, which both of those, they said, you know, they'd be useful in your hobbies. And I couldn't agree more. So I normally use PETG because it's strong, it's UV resistant, etc. But on my Bamboo Lab P1S, it prints beautifully. So I'm not a faffer. If anybody's used a Bamboo Lab printer, they know how good they are. There's loads of other printers out there, don't get me wrong, but the Bamboo Lab was the one that stood out for me. And I've owned it for probably over a year now. I've had no issues with it. Spares, like spare nozzles, etc. They're all pretty reasonably priced. And it's a reliable printer. I can just put stuff in it, hit the print button, and it comes out the other end. You know, the, the quality of it is very good. Um, and I'll be honest, my printer is running nearly all the time. So it's always a little worry when you change filaments. Like I say, I normally use uh, PETG and the standard print settings for it are very, very good. There was a print setting for the carbon fiber, but there wasn't one for the glass fiber. So I did a little bit of research and they're very similar. The only difference being is that the glass fiber temperature had to be a little bit different, um, which it did say on the, on the roll. So hopefully you can see that this is the glass fiber roll. It says Tin Mori, which is the brand. Um, it gives you some information about how to contact them. A uh, website that they've got is very good. And it gives you some of the print settings, recommended print settings. Comes on one of these standard one kilogram rolls, which is handy because it fits straight into the printer. And on average, I think you get around 300 meters of filament on these. So it's gonna be almost impossible for me to show you this filament and explain it to you, but those that do printing know about PETG and what you have in here are thou or millions of tiny fibers, glass fibers that are shred up and they impregnate it into the PETG when they, when they make it. And the idea is, is obviously you get the, the flexibility of the PETG, but you get the strength of the carbon fiber or the glass fiber. Now I've done a couple of test prints with each one. I'm going to show you the difference between them um, in appearance. And then we're just going to do a very non-scientific experiment on uh, see how flexible they are and see how strong they appear to be, but only in comparison to each other. I'm not going to, you know, I've not got loads of gadgets and things like that. I'm using a bucket, some sand and a set of scales, and that's going to be my test bed. So over the last week, the print has been flat out uh, with these filaments in. I've been printing off lots of bits and pieces, uh, useful pieces. There's stuff that I've made already before. And I just thought, do you know what? I could do with that and a stronger filament, so I've redone them. Um, I did the little wrecker in the carbon fiber, which I ho hopefully you've seen the video. If you haven't, please go back on my playlists and have a look at that. But before we get into it, I just want to say thank you to Tim Mori for getting in touch with me. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, for one of the little guys to get hold of a big company like this, and hopefully this is going to be the start of something going forward. I do go through tons of filament because I'm constantly printing bits and bobs, you know, handy things for at home. Uh, I do little bits for friends occasionally and, you know, obviously for my hobbies. Um, I went to the tip yesterday and I probably took 30 empty spools of uh, filament up there just to dispose of the spools because they're, they're no use to me. So um, it's nice to be able to recycle those. So let me show you the little test that I've set up and then we can go over the difference between the three filaments and then we'll get some weight put on them and test them a little bit. Right, so here we've got the three filaments set up in the little jig that I've made. I'm just gonna talk about them quickly and a couple of differences between them. Then I'll tell you which one's my favorite and then we'll get on and do the test. So first of all is the PETG. So this is just a straightforward PETG, which polyethylene terra, terephthalate glycol. And it's a thermoplastic polyester. So excuse my pronunciation of that. You might have to go and look that up if you're that way inclined. So this is just the straight plastic. This is the one with the glass fiber in, indicated by the GF. And this is the one with the carbon fiber in, indicated by the CF. Now, hopefully you can see the difference in the textures. Um, these are 
layer lines in the print. Now I did print them um, laying down. All three of these are the same. So this is something I just designed quickly on Tinkercad. So dimensions wise, it was 14 millimeters in the design. So as you can see there, just a smidge over, that's just a smidge under, and that's just a smidge under too. So you do get a little bit of shrinkage sometimes with some of the filaments, and also, um, depending on your settings, you can get a bit of what is called basically mushrooming. So it's where the filament's a bit too hot and you're trying to push out too much at once and it just splodges out, like if you've got some hot syrup and pulled it onto a worktop. So just to say the PET G is from eSun, which is one of the filaments that I use nearly all of the time. Um, and the PET G, CF and GF are from Tin Mori. Now they all printed fine with no issues. So I print PET G all the time. The CF, the carbon fiber, I did use the standard setting on the printer. And as I said, the GF, there wasn't a standard setting. So I just copied the, the carbon one and just changed the print temperature. So before we get too far, my favorite out of the three is definitely the carbon fiber this stuff goes down beautifully it's incredibly strong and just as a test piece i hope you can see that but this is just something i designed for a little remote control you can't even see you can see lines in it but they're not they're not print lines they're not the layer lines um i actually printed this stood up on end you know in the flesh i've struggled to see any print lines on this whatsoever it prints absolutely beautifully. So my little test rig, all I've done, I've just made up a little uh, little rope here. I've got a bucket. I'm going to pour some sand into the bucket and then I'm going to count how much sand I put in the bucket before the filament deforms past what I consider to be a usable amount of flex. Okay, so first one we're going to go with is the PET G. So I'm just going to add the sand in slowly, keeping my eye on the print and we're probably about a kilo in already and there's hardly any deflection on that whatsoever and obviously a lot of these filaments you would do want a little bit of flex in them because of what we're using them for but it is interesting to see how strong they are so we've probably got about five mil of deflection now still no signs of breakage no cracking nothing like that so we've got about 10 mil of deflection there so i think over the course of a you know, that's at least 200 millimeters away from the, the securing point. That looks really strong. So I'm gonna make that the end of the test for that PET G, and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so we're now set up on the glass fiber one. I'm gonna do the same test and hopefully you can see the deflection. So I'm gonna look for about the same amount of deflection, which would be 10 mil. So we're almost a kilo in and nothing so far. So we're just starting to get a bit, probably not quite five mil yet. So we're probably at about eight, eight mil deflection there, I reckon. So probably just approaching the same amount of deflection as the PET G. So we'll stop there. And I'll do the same again. I'll weigh that and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, and finally, we've got the carbon fiber. Just starting to get a little bit of deflection. Again, probably one and a half kilos in. So already, you know, when you start talking about one and a half kilos over the course of that sort of 200 mil away from the fulcrum point, that is a lot. So probably five mil deflection there. Obviously the angle of the camera is gonna look different for you. Probably not quite the same amount of deflection as the 
probably not quite the same amount of deflection as a glass fibre yet, so we'll go a bit more. And there we go, I think that's about the same. So do the same again, I'm just going to measure what's in the bucket and then we'll have a look at the results. Okay, and finally we've got the carbon fibre. just starting to get a little bit of deflection. Again, probably one and a half kilos in. So already, you know, when you start talking about one and a half kilos over the course of that sort of 200 mil away from the fulcrum point, that is a lot. So probably five mil deflection there. Obviously the angle of the camera is gonna look different for you. Probably not quite the same amount of deflection as a glass fiber yet, so we'll go a bit more. And there we go, I think that's about the same. So do the same again, I'm just gonna measure what's in the bucket and then we'll have a look at the results. Okay, so here we've got our results. So with our normal PET-G, we managed to exert 3,233 grams um, with a deflection of around 10 millimeters. The PET-G glass fiber, we did 4,600 grams and the PET-G carbon fiber, we did 4,320. So as I said, I'm not a scientist, even though I've got the glasses for it, but I think this little experiment just goes to show that the difference between the normal PETG and the one with the, the added glass fibre or the carbon fibre um, fibres in it obviously makes a huge difference to the strength of it. So just have a look at the PETG. So this has a nice finish, it has a glossy finish. This is the side that the supports were on, so it's a little bit untidy, um, but it doesn't bother me when I'm doing the bits I'm doing, you, you can pretty much clean that off until it's non-existent. But you can see the print lines in it there, and there you can just see the layer lines. But I do actually like the layer lines on some of the prints because if you get them in the right orientation, um, they look really good. So PETG is incredibly flexible. So that is actually a 180 twist from one end to the other. Even though this is an I-beam, it's got, excuse me, grunting, but that is that is strong. So this is two millimeters thick on all three planes. Um, as I showed you earlier, we did have a little bit of it was a little bit bigger than the print, and and these two were a little bit smaller. So you did get a little bit of deviation, but PET G definitely a nice strong filament. So the PET G with the glass fiber again, you get a nice finish. I did find with this, um, it was great on flat surfaces, but if you were trying to do thinner, more complex shapes, um, it wasn't so keen. So I did use the 0.4 hardened nozzle, which it recommends for both this and the carbon fiber. Because basically, if you imagine pulling a diamond encrusted chain through a hole, it's gonna rip it apart. So um, that's kind of how this works. I can twist that, but probably only 90 degrees. I literally can't twist it anymore um, with my bare hands or even with my human hands. So that's pretty strong um, and it just you it kind of it's, it's hard to explain but when you're handling it you can kind of feel that it's got fibers in it you don't get them in your hands but you know you can definitely feel that sort of fibrous finish and then lastly my favorite the carbon fiber so the finish on this is absolutely amazing you can barely see those print lines whatsoever as you could with the if i compare that back to the pet g you know if i just show you i know it's got a matte finish but Honestly, you can barely see those lines at all. This came out really nice. Um, I've printed lots with this. I printed some bits for a friend, um, and he said he's never seen such great prints before. So I think if I didn't need the gloss finish, um, the PET GCF would definitely be the one I'd go for. And again, it's got about the same amount of flex in as the glass fiber, maybe a little bit more. That finish is just amazing. Um, and with that, you know, that strength, stronger than PETG um, on its own, I'm really happy with that. So I'd like to say a big thank you to Tim Murray for getting in touch with me. And hopefully um, I'll get to use a lot more of their filaments in the future. Uh, just to let you know, I have ordered some more of the carbon fibre because I intend on using that quite a lot. So just an example piece that I printed the other day is one of these little bits for my uh, my little wrecker that I'm doing. So as you can see on the bottom, that is the texture of the bed plate. 
and that is the finish that you get so it's absolutely fantastic i really can't fault that at all so i was super impressed with all three filaments um the e-sun pet g that i've used for ages i've had no problems with that whatsoever i literally just put a print on and i'm happy i go away and come back and it's always uh, printed perfectly the gf the glass fiber it definitely has its place if i were doing something probably larger and a bit more structural then i might consider using it but just that the the finish is not quite so nice so when you look at it it just doesn't look as pretty and then definitely the pet g carbon fiber is my favorite out of the three i can highly recommend this um it it is a little bit brittle so if you're going to print something that's going to take a lot of impact you're probably better off sticking with just the normal pet g looks and structural things i mean i printed some shock towers out of this which came out fantastic um, and no doubt they're going to be nice and strong and obviously they've cost me pence to print so um, if they do break not a problem but just because of the quality of that finish um, and the strength this is going to be my favorite so i hope you've enjoyed that little experiment and you know i look forward to maybe doing some more of those and if you've got some ideas of ways that I could test the filaments as well, then let me know in the comments. Um, but if you're after some great carbon fiber or glass fiber filament, give this um, give Tin Mori a look in. I ordered it from Amazon uh, when I ordered the extra filaments, although they did send me the original ones. But easy to order off Amazon. I think they had um, some discounts as well, and hopefully we'll get a discount code soon. So thanks for coming along and watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.